What? What I am still doing here? Well, forget about me. Let's just dive in. In general, there's a guide which you can find on the Blender BIM documentation here, which we're going to look at today for dealing with large models over here. And as it says over here, there's a few ways which a model can be large. You can have a large file size. Objects can have large amounts of polygons or, or complex geometry. Another one is it can have, if it's a mesh-like geometry, it would generally have large polygon counts. If it's not mesh-like, like a solid geometry, then it may have excessive or complex or invalid booleans, which, which can also cause problems, or also just sheer number of elements. And these largeness affect different programs in different ways. So for example, some IFC software are just viewers, and they can deal with certain amounts of this largeness in different ways to actual BIM authoring applications, which actually have to edit the IFC. So those types of editing software, like Blender BIM, is a BIM authoring platform, and they have different design constraints and can deal with different sizes of IFC. So it's important to figure out, depending on your use case, IFC just for archival or for long-term editing, what you want to deal with. Yeah, first priority is regardless of the data. So 100 megabytes is around a mid-sized IFC model, uh, just from the file size alone. In general, I would say that anything above 750 is not good enough. We're talking about the step, the .ifc file. If you're dealing with IFC in another format, that will, it will be a separate issue. But since this is the most common, anything above 750, you should be rejecting it immediately because generally a lot of platforms will just struggle when you're dealing with that amount of data. And the cost usually isn't related with IFC. It's usually due to just poor data management. And you can see this section here for large file sizes. You can see a whole list of, of how to of strategies on tackling different problems you'll face. But these are the types of things which you can use to tackle a large file size issue. Most of the time, it's just something you're doing not quite right in, in the way you're managing your BIM data. So in this case, it's a mid-sized model. I'd say anything under 100 megabytes starts to move into the small IFC territory, the small model territory. And we can also see here it's a 2x3, we'll, we'll get back to that. And if I just hit load project here, and what I have over here is the console. So we'll see the console pop up with a kind of status report of what it's doing. So there it is, it's just, that's my disk. The lag you just saw was my disk reading 100 megabytes. Now you can see it's, it's creating some elements, only 899 elements. And by the way, that's tiny. So we're talking, now we're talking about the number of elements in the model. So if you have over 50,000 objects in the model, that starts to talk about a, a large model. And mm -hmm. by the way, when I say a model, I'm, it's usually segmented by discipline. So we're not talking about a federated model, it's a, a single disciplines model. 899 is really tiny compared to 50,000. And it's taking a while to load this 100 megabyte model and it finished in 45 seconds. Here, we'll take a look at the results. And this is actually, and kind of underwhelming. It's not a lot for how long it took, 45 seconds or so. There's really not much in here, you know, it's just a bunch of rectangles, a, a couple of extruded columns. You know, it's got a fillet in it, but that's fine. There's really not much happening in here. So why is our file size so big? Why did it take so long to import? And I can bet you that it took a long time for them to export as well. So if I go under the quality control panel, and I go into the debug panel, there's, there's a few kind of advanced tools you can use, but the easiest one to do is just press this button to select the high polygon meshes here. There's a few possibilities here. We know it's not the file size, which is the issue. You know, 100 megabytes seems obsessively large for something like this. And we also know, so it could be one of these things. We know it's not the number of elements. There's only under a thousand elements here. It's very few objects. So it's one of these two. And the most likely one it's going to be is this, because when you have a high polygon count and they're using mesh-like geometry in the BIM model, then naturally your file size is also going to be larger because you're also going to have a lot of right a lot of triangles a lot of faces a lot of polygons whereas if it were this one then the file size would likely be small but slow to load so if it's small but slow to load you're probably dealing with this if it's large but slow to load it's probably dealing with this so that's the kind of the way we break them down it's most likely to do with this one and we'll take a look in total, we can see there are around 630,000 faces, which is obscene for a model of this simplicity. And if we click on this, this selects the, this is set to 90%, which means it's selecting the top 10% of objects which have a high polygon count. So if we, you know, if we got that number of faces per object and we said, what's the top 10%? It's these objects. And you can see 56 out of 666 objects. So just about 10% of the objects are about 10% of the geometry. And, and that, that's okay. But if we bring this down 
let's say 80, we can see it's it's still 56 objects, which means that these 56 objects are taking up 20% of our faces, roughly. And we can jump that down to something like 50%, and it's still the same 56 objects, which means that 56, 50% 50 of the geometry in this model is mm -hmm. taken up by 10% of the objects. So these objects are taking up way more than, than they need to. And in fact, if we isolate just these objects, we'll, we'll keep in mind, 630,000, mm -hmm. we'll isolate down that to 400. So you can see that two thirds of your geometry data are just this, these objects. And if you take a look at what these objects are, you can see that basically the same object copy pasted again and again, it's a bunch of rebar going into, I'm not sure what this thing a is. A profile. Yeah, it's a steel oh. profile that connect the reinforcement on the both sides. Great. So this one object, which is repeated again and again, is taking up a huge amount of file. And same with this. So let's say this is one type, this is another type, and you can check how many types there are. So we'll take a look at the construction type. So this object here, this is the object type. So all of these share the same geometry. And all of these, I would also assume, share the same geometry as well. And these share the same geometry. So if somebody in their model just remodel three object types, they could cut out, let's see how much they could cut out. If we take the top 70%, they could cut out 70% of their 80%. Let's keep on going. 90%, you know, this model could easily be 10 megabytes if they okay. just fix those three object types. And so you get a big payoff from doing a little bit of work of just remodeling that. 95% of the data is stuck in these three poorly made models. In this case, what I can tell you is that these are some Revit families that has been downloaded from the producer website. So yes, you are right, right. about that. So manufacturer downloads are a risky thing. And you know, if anybody's writing these execution plans, there should be a, a note saying, careful when you do that. I'm pretty sure it's a mesh, mesh-like thing. And I've seen mesh-like things are usually represented by tessellations or faceted B reps. And so if I click on here, we can see it's a B rep. It's a, so it is a faceted B rep. B rep stands for boundary representation. So it's just the surface of things being described. And usually you shouldn't be doing that for this type of shape. I mean, if, if that's steel, steel is best rep, usually best represented by parametric solid profile extrusion. Rebar is best represented using a extruded disc which goes along a path, whereas this has been using an inappropriate geometry type. And if I go in, kind of go into edit mode here, you can see exactly where that geometry is. So let's just isolate that and go and see. Go and see. And in fact, the majority of the geometry is hidden in this part here, which you actually don't even see. It's inside. And you can also see this interesting, strange, artifacts happening in the model. So it's just it just needs to be remodeled and it doesn't take long to do. You just kind of extrude out a cylinder for your rebar and you just make this a box. And it, it's also a bit different depending on the platform you're using. So this is this is coming from Revit. And Revit has a few problems with dealing with this types of faceted geometry that you won't get in other software like, like Tecla or Archicad. So dealing with especially filleted corners around geometry in Archicad and Tecla, no problem. But in Revit, you start to face a lot of issues. And this is not actually a, a filleted corner, but Revit is just generally <laughs> not particularly good with meshing things. And let me just describe what I mean by that. It may not be so clear when I talk about filleted things. So I'm on the OSRH wiki over here, and there's a lot of really fun articles about Revit. So if I just search for Revit geometry here, here we are, Revit and IFC geometry. This talks about geometry issues in IFC that are specific to Revit. And the one I just talked about is a filleted extrusion. So in Revit, basically you've got five things to model with. You can extrude, revolve, and a few other things web blend or something. And and the most common one is this extrusion. You, you draw a profile and you extrude it. And as long as you, and so here's an example of an extrusion along a path. And you can see that this extrusion has kind of like a C channel, except one is a sharp corner and one is a filleted corner. 
And the moment you introduce a filleted corner into an extrusion, and it doesn't matter if it's this type of extrusion or another type of extrusion, uh, Revit kind of goes crazy. And it inserts a lot of unnecessary geometry. So for example, this guy without the extrusion is 10 kilobytes of an IFC model, which is, which is still pretty big anyway. That's, that's a bit crazy for just one object. But with that filleted corner, file size multiplies by 27 times. It's just obscene. And a more relatable example is this as a door frame. So you know how you model the, the architects tend to model the door frames. Let's say it's a steel door frame. They get the profile, they model it out. You know, they're, they're feeling particularly creative that day and they, they want to get that, that exact one millimeter or whatever thickness and then the fillet. And what happens is this, you get this kind of completely unnecessary, like all of this is unnecessary planar geometry, which again, multiplies out the file size a lot. So that door is 8,000 vertices, which if you worked at Pixar, you'd be fired. Something to watch out for. Okay, we've complained enough about that one object. That object is also misclassified. You can see it's a generic element or a building element proxy. So let's reload the model now. And I'm going to enable advanced mode. And what that does is that it won't load the geometry yet. I will specify a custom filter of what geometry I want to begin so I can partially load and partially modify an IC model. So here's my filter mode, and let's just grab everything except these proxy elements. So okay. I minus those, those complex things. And we'll load that in. And I, there was something else I should have done, but there you go, it's much, much faster. And in fact, it was, if I minus off the, the overhead, it was about 3.15 seconds. How do we know if we did not include in selection other proxy elements? How do you know that those were the only proxy elements? Yeah, I didn't check just now, but if, if you actually wanted to do it properly, you would go and enable advanced mode. And there's a few ways you could do it. And if I were going to do this a little bit more strictly, I could choose by type ISO. Yeah, All right. uh, that's so, one, ISO curb. All right. So if I wanted to be really specific, I would just exclude these types. And then the rest would be enabled. That's it. So out of the 899 objects, and there it is, much faster. Yeah. How much, how, how long got it? Three? Well, it's, it's yeah, three, three and a half seconds compared oh, to yeah. no, 45 44, seconds. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's significantly, for a small amount of work, you can get huge benefits in the import and export time. No more just, and people complain about this all the time. You know, they say, oh, I'm waiting for hours for my files to import and export. And it's, well... Actually, you're not being very strict about the way you're modeling. If you are using that time to research how you can improve the modeling techniques, then you'll get much lower quick time to export, right? So Yeah, that's right. And it's the same. If your main tool is Revit and you spend a lot of time optimizing your workflow in Revit, and if somebody asks you to deliver IFC, it doesn't mean that you, that you stop caring about the geometry, the data inside your IFC models. Because at the end of the day, the Revit model is going to disappear in a few years. What are you saying? What are you saying? I don't understand what you mean with this. Oh, well, at the end of the day, you know, you, you hand over a bunch of models to the client and the Revit model has, a, has an expiry date on it. You know, you really think somebody's going to be paying somebody to be continuously maintaining and updating Revit model for many, many years? No, of course not. It will soon expire and not be able to be opened in newer versions of Revit anymore, or you will open it and it will go through a process which may or may not corrupt or lose data, who knows what. And Or they may not have access to Revit. And keep in mind, Revit is only one small part of the project, right? You'll have all the Tecla models. Somebody might be using Archicad. Somebody might be using specific software for concrete or civil. And so there'll be a ton of models being produced. And the only thing any real estate owner is going to really have at the end of it, which they can access, is the IFC. The rest, yes. one by one, it's not going to be able to be open. They will lose their license for it. A lot of people don't really understand the effects of this and the advantages of owning your data in a format that you can access it in 50 years, like today. Correct. I mean, if you take, for example, what do you get when you start an old project? If you're lucky, you get you know scanned hand drawings on a very old project. And then you fast forward a little bit, and if you're lucky, you get DWGs, not mm -hmm. even DXF. We weren't even clever back then. We're using DWGs, and you kind of hope that it still opens in, in the later versions of AutoCAD. That's what you get. And you know what? Surely we'd be expecting as an industry in the future to be getting models, BIM databases, 
with rich relationships in it. Exactly. But you nailed it in, with databases. That's what <laughs> we should aim for. Absolutely. And in 10 years, if we're still getting DWGs, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You've been taking a bit of a short-term view to yeah. BIM. I can assure you that in Norway, that won't be the case. <laughs> here, things are changing and the IFC becomes the norm here as a requirement on all the projects. So, But uh, I really hope uh, this will change in other places as well. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the more savvy clients are, are understand that and they're requiring it and getting more and more pedantic about the data inside, which we'll look at today. But at the same time, if your client's not requiring it, you know, I think it's part of your professional duty response. Yes, yeah, your responsibility. Do, do a good job, especially those out there who are who are focusing just on the digital aspect, not on the, not on the domain, like an engineer or actor, but those who, are, who mm-hmm. have as part of their job focusing on the digital side of it, whether you have, you know, BIM in job title or so on. Yeah, this is what you should be looking at. Yeah, I but in any case, that's rant, rant over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It. it was a bit long this video, but I hope it was not too long, and you learn at least something from it. If not, then I'm really sorry I disappointed. And you should definitely leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for that. But if you instead enjoyed it, then you might just wanna keep watching because I promise you. You do not want to miss the next one.